Hello, happy holidays, and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is yet another Pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this Pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, I have written down many things that I would like to discuss. We will, of course, recommence ah, our readings from Peter Straub's The Throat. We will get into some of the Christmas plans I have for uploading videos, things that you can expect on the channel. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a pleasant conversation I had with one of our patrons, one of my patrons, I suppose, from Patreon.com. We're going to get into the new series that I started on Stuff and Things Plays. We also are going to show you, actually I won't show it to you yet, the next in our series of revisited blends where I go back, I pick a blend that I reviewed years before, I try it again for the first time in a long time, and I have one that has been requested many times. I'm going to show that to you soon. But first, as I mentioned, it's time for a reading from our good friend Peter Straub's The Throat. Peter is a viewer, an all-around nice guy, an award-winning author, and a Patreon supporter. And we have been reading The Throat. We missed a couple weeks, but now we are back, and it is time to continue. Actually, because I think I stopped sort of mid-paragraph. We're going to go back a little bit here, and we will continue with this now. You think I don't know that? What I'm saying is... Ratman shoved another dead soldier in a zippered bag into the darkness of the shed. What I'm saying is, I was dead too. For a minute, maybe longer. Of what? Shock, Ratman said simply. That's the reason I never saw Bobby's sweat get blown apart. Didn't you ever hear about this? I heard about it. Lots of guys I met. It happened to them or someone they knew. You die, you come back. Is that true? I asked. For a second, Ratman looked wrathful. I had challenged his system of belief, and I was a person who knew nothing. Pirate came to my rescue. How come you could remember seeing this guy get wasted if you didn't see it in the first place? I was out of my body. Constarnet, underdog, said Picklock, and grabbed... I, I added the Constarnet. And grabbed the handle of the heavy bag I, I, had, very, I had nearly dropped. What the F is the matter with you? Single-handedly, he tossed the bag into the shed behind us. Underdog never dropped the effing bag, said De Maestro, De Maestro, and deliberately dropped a bag onto the concrete. Whatever was inside it gurgled and splattered. For a moment or two, we continued to unload the bodies into the shed. Then Ratman said, anyhow, about a second later, I found out I was still alive. All right, gang. Another exciting reading from Peter Straub's The Throat. At some point, I'm going to have to make like a supercut where I just take all of these ridiculous readings and ridiculous in the way that I read it and put them all together. When the book is finished, that will be crazy. That might actually be really entertaining. I'm not sure. But anyway, we have many things to discuss. Um, as I mentioned, it is getting to be near Christmas time. Let me get out my little Google, not Google, my iPhone calendar thing here. So I'm recording this on the 14th, that is a Saturday. This will post on the 15th, tomorrow or today, as you are watching this. And then we have basically one more weekend until Christmas comes. It's going to be a weekend filled with many family activities because I have both my brother and his wife and their new baby coming to visit from Texas. Uh, they're getting here on Wednesday. Quite looking forward to that. But then also, uh, right around Christmas, my fiancé's mother and her brother, not her mother's brother, my fiancé's brother, are coming into town. You don't need to know all this. But there's going to be a lot of family stuff going on. So what I have already done, I have already recorded every episode of Stuff and Things Reads The Christmas Carol, or A Christmas Carol. So next week, on Monday, will be an episode of Stuff and Things Reads. On Wednesday, I'm going to do a uh, trip to Maui video, because I still have lots of footage from that. And because the weather has been so rainy and cold and, and a little miserable lately, I thought it would be nice to actually go back and edit some more of that footage when it's like 90 degrees and beautiful and we're snorkeling and doing fun things. So maybe that would be a nice little wintertime, Christmas time video to have. Um, that will post on the 18th on Wednesday. Then on Friday the 20th, we will have yet another Christmas Carol, A Christmas Carol reading. So that'll bring us up to three episodes of A Christmas Carol. Then the following Monday, Oh, and then you'll have your Sunday stuff and things on Sunday, obviously. Then on Monday the 23rd, we will have nothing, because <laughs> there never, usually never is an episode on Monday. We did have one on the 16th, because I'm trying to fit all these Christmas Carol episodes in there. But on Tuesday, on Christmas Eve, the 24th, 
will be the last part of the Christmas Carol, of a Christmas Carol. So if you had been following along with that series, or if you want to wait, you could wait if you want. Watch them all at once. It's not very long, I would say. It's about, it's a little over an hour, maybe an hour and a half long to read through the entire book. That will be posting on Tuesday the 24th, the final episode of that. So that might be a nice kind of Christmas Eve activity that'll post at noon Pacific time. Um, and then that will be it for the week of Christmas until the following Sunday when we'll have another Sunday stuff and things. I think that's right. Um, I may try to throw another video in there, but I'm not going to promise that. But for now, you'll still get, you know, the same amount, actually a few more videos than you would normally get. But we're not going to have our normal Wednesday video on uh, Christmas itself, probably. So that keeps you abreast of the Stuff and Things channel. On Stuff and Things Plays, I have started a brand new series. I'm doing this out of order here. Let me see. Check mark, check mark, check mark here. We are now going to be starting, or we did just start, I've recorded the first two episodes of a brand new series, and it is on the video game Outer Wilds. Not the Outer Worlds, but Outer Wilds. It is a game that came out a while ago? Can't remember exactly when. It was this year, but it's, it's been a while. I kind of missed it when it first came out. There was a lot of buzz about it. People really enjoyed it. They said it was really unique, really interesting. It's sort of an exploration sort of game. You are traveling the stars. You're part of an alien race. And it seems really cool. It seems really interesting. And I had some people request that I play it. I decided to pick it up. That starts this Monday. So we have an episode of that on Monday, this coming Monday, tomorrow. Then on Wednesday, we will have a Minecraft episode. And then on Friday, we'll have another Outer Wilds episode. And I think I'm going to keep that schedule for a while. Monday, Friday, Outer Wilds, Wednesdays will be... Uh, it should be Minecraft Monday, shouldn't it? But we're going to have Minecraft Wednesdays. I'll have to think about that. Um, so we're going to basically two Outer Wilds videos, one Minecraft video a week on Stuff and Things plays. Next, um, I had an amazing conversation with Patreon support. Wow, look at my pen is leaking. My Lamy, my Lamy, ugh, my Lamy 2000 is leaking. And I'm not sure why. It doesn't want to focus on the pen. Focus on the pen. Anyway, that's interesting. Some pressure differential going on here. Uh. Um, what was I saying? I had a great conversation with a Patreon supporter, uh, our good friend Michael. You hear me write, read out his name when we're going through the Maniac tier. Right there, Michael Pilcher. Um, and I just want to once again thank all of you for just being really nice. It's always kind of daunting when you only have interaction with someone online. Let me get my pipe going here, actually, by the way. I've got my Ashton here. Beautiful pipe. I don't have my lighter. Hold on. Oh, and there's a train coming, too. Serendipity. We will also have a train break. Some interesting smoke formations going on here in the frame. We're back, the train is still lumbering by, but we must press onward. I am having a little bit of Elizabethan in my nice Ashton. Um, I was speaking about the conversation I had with our good friend Michael, Patreon supporter. Um, he is on the Maniac tier, so he's entitled to a 15 minute Skype conversation every three months, I think is the reward tier for that. And he was super cool about, you know, whenever you have time and we were trying to meet up and get our schedules going because we live on opposite sides of the country, time zones, all that. But as I was saying, like, you never know after just having interactions with someone through text or online, um, through Patreon messages and stuff, you don't know what kind of conversation you'll be able to have, if you'll have, um, if you'll hit it off. Because even if someone seems like a nice person, you don't know, eh, can, we, can we carry on a conversation? Um, yes, I could with Michael. He was great. He was super generous, super nice. And it just is indicative to me of the quality of audience I have. You are all so nice. And it is so rare that someone is a dick out there. Occas occasionally it happens, but overwhelmingly, I have never seen a YouTube, um, I guess, viewership or a community as nice as cool as all of you are. And I just wanted to thank you all for that again. Thank you, Michael, as well. 
And also my sister, again, texted me today and has just still been floored and flabbergasted about the donations she has been receiving on her GoFundMe. If you didn't see that, um, I'll just briefly mention she's had cancer again. This is the third time she's been treated for cancer and she had a GoFundMe up. I mentioned it on the show and you were all so generous, so amazingly generous. I will have that link still in the description box below, but I just, I don't feel like I can say enough how much I appreciate you all. So thank you once again. And speaking of thanking you once again, now, now bear with me, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. My little brother has dipped his toe into the whole uh, selling products on Amazon thing. And now, only if you are shopping for a gym towel, a towel that you can bring to the gym with you, wipe yourself off, maybe wipe the machines off. He has one for sale. It is called the Vanquisher Microfiber Quick Dry Gym Towel. Um, I'm just mentioning it. I'll put a link down below. I do have a platform, but don't buy this if you don't need it. Okay, only buy it if you actually want a gym towel. I can't remember what the price was, but I'll put the link and everything in the description box below. And again, I'm not trying to sell things or advertise things. I'm just doing a favor for my brother. He's a good guy. Um, speaking of which, I have a sectional for sale. It is a mauve color. Okay, no, I'm kidding. That's enough for the advertisements for now. And last but not least, I have to briefly mention the Seahawks. They will have already played by the time you are seeing this. They lost last week. The 49ers won. So the 49ers are ahead of them again in the NFC West. What I'm hoping is that the Seahawks will win out. The 49ers will win out. I mean, it'd be great if they dropped a game too, but I don't think they're going to until the very last game, week 17 of the regular season, or it's actually, you know, the 16th game, but it's considered week 17 because there's a bye week. Anyway, and basically that game would determine the NFC West. That would be awesome. That would be really cool to see. I just hope that the Seahawks win up until that point so that can actually take place and then actually win during that game. We'll see. They did not look good last week against the Rams. Um, May, it's possible maybe the 49ers will drop a game, but I would love it if it were the Seahawks who were able to come back and beat them. Um, that would be cool. But now it is time for me to reveal to you the next blend that we're going to be trying in the Revisited series. I first reviewed this quite some time ago and I quite liked it at the time. It is now Peterson My Mixture 965. It is a slightly oriental forward English mixture. It's got some Latakia in there. It also has some Cavendish in there, which after a while, uh, when I first reviewed it, I really, really, really liked it. And then I sort of drifted away from it a little bit, I think because of the Cavendish. I haven't had it in several years and I'm looking forward to retrying it. This is still, I know, a very favorite blend for a lot of people and now it's available again under the Peterson name. So my mixture, 965 thumbnail could this be the thumbnail there you go will be the next episode of revisited um i'm not sure when though because as i mentioned i have sort of a plan for the videos that i'll be posting on the channel but i know many of you were asking which blend would be next and it will be my mixture 965. And now it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer you. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me there, and I will answer your questions as well. First, from Twitter, from Steinhelm, at Steinhelm1, I have this question. I have been enjoying Stratford lately, but my wife would like something more aromatic from time to time. Do you have any suggestions? Maybe something that isn't awful, but is a pleasant smoke as well as a room note. <sighs> something slightly aromatic that is a pleasant smoke and room note. I would have said something like, mm, there are some English mixtures. So, you mentioned Stratford, that is a Virginia blend. Has she experienced the aroma of any Latakia blends? Does she hate Latakia? Because that would be very important to what I would actually suggest to you. I would say a kind of oriental forward English blend might be kind of good for her. Um, even though the Latakia has a very smoky, leathery scent to it, if you get something with 
uh, that's really oriental forward, sometimes you'll have this nice kind of incense potpourri sort of smell going on there. I would suggest that, or maybe if she doesn't like the kind of hay, grassy Virginia odor, then maybe something that's more burly, well, no, burly can taste kind of cigarette or smell kind of cigarette um, I don't know. Let's open this up to suggestions. Leave it in the comments below if you can think of a good blend. Probably not a full-blown aromatic from what I can tell here, but something that maybe has a bit of an aromatic quality that you think, if you have a significant other who has enjoyed that smell, you could share it with Steinhelm in the comments. Next, from Jason Hunt at Hexator. Um, this isn't really a question, but he just says, Sick Yoodle took home best game of the year and best action adventure game at the Video Game Awards, Bradley. You picked a winner there. Um, I heard that, and I was actually kind of shocked that Sekiro won uh, Game of the Year. I thought it was the Game of the Year, but I didn't play all that many games this last year. But I thought it was fantastic. If you haven't watched the series on Stuff and Things Plays, you should. I finally finished it a while back. I beat the last boss. Uh, next, from Walter Sobchak Jr. at Liberty Lebowski. Hey Bradley, congratulations on your engagement. If I'm going to ask my, ah, I'm going to ask my lady friend to marry me. Congratulations, Walter. I hope she says yes. I'm sure she will. And I have questions about how you went about getting the ring. Did she pick it out, or was it a total surprise? Did you go to a local store or a chain? Well, Walter, um, I don't want to reveal too many of my secrets because my fiancé does watch this, but basically, it was kind of funny. Um, we, hadn't, we hadn't officially spoken about getting married, but there were many hints dropped, and... I had a very good indication that she wanted to get married at some point. And in fact, she had sent me a picture of a ring once, which is a, a very good hint. Um, and I basically took that picture and tried to figure out, like, what, what is this exactly? Like, what would you call this? And then searched high and wide, high and wide? Far and wide on Google to find a ring that looked like it. And I think I found the exact ring, and it was from an online retailer, and I purchased it from them. But it, it took quite a bit of scouring. I'm not sure where she found the picture. In fact, I never asked her about that. Uh, obviously not at the time either, because I didn't want her to know. The biggest thing, and the hardest hurdle, was figuring out a ring size. Because she never wore rings, so I couldn't compare it to a ring that she had, or you know, find a ring she had and measure it or anything. So I was reading all these articles like, how do you get your fiancé's ring size correct? Um, I would like surreptitiously hold up one of my fingers, like my pinky finger to her ring finger. I was like, mm, seems similar in size. And then finally, I waited for her to fall asleep once. And I took a piece of string and I like wrapped it around and tried to mark where it met on her finger. I keep showing my pinky finger, but her ring finger. Then I measured that and tried to extrapolate the size it was very wrong. It was way too big when I got it for her, and so I had to have it resized. But I guess it's better to have it too big than too small. Anyway, next question from Tyler, at Tyler Brubaker 20 <clears throat> Hey Bradley, I know that you received a Bruyere St. Claude pipe a few videos back. However, the shank was broken, but I remember you saying that you might make it into an army mount pipe. Have you thought about engaging that product, or project? Um, I am still thinking about that, and in fact, when I was talking to our good friend Michael uh, today, I, we were talking about Mike Myers, who is a pipe repairsman, uh, who some of you may, have know, may know about, and I, it reminded me once again that I kind of want to do that. So I might actually look into doing that rather soon, giving Mike a, uh, a message and seeing what he says. Next, from Bill Ball. It's a good name. At Bill Ball PHC, old man voice, he requests. <clears throat> GLP's Westminster is my go-to blend. How does it compare to my mixture, 965? Thanks. Well, funny you should mention that. Uh, 965 will be the next in the Revisited series. As I mentioned, I wouldn't say that Westminster compares too closely to 965. 965 is pretty oriental forward, and then with that, um, with the Cavendish in there, it, it, it has quite a bit of a different character from Westminster, from what I can remember. I haven't had West, Westminster other than the one, maybe I had more than the one tin I reviewed, maybe one or two tins, and 965 I'd had quite a bit more than that, but not for a couple years. So perhaps after I've done the revisited episode, I will be able to uh, answer that question more fully. 
And last, from Gentleman's Corner, at Gentleman's Corn 1. Hey Bradley, as you've been doing the revisited videos, I couldn't help but notice, being a guitarist myself, the Rickenbacker guitar, box amp, and bass. Do you still own and play them? Uh, we never see them in the new studio background. In the new studio background. Um, that's a question that you would come up a lot when I used to film in my apartment. You would see my guitar and bass and amp. Um, I still have them. I haven't really played music for a long time, sadly. It seems like I never have time, but that is something I would like to reconnect with at some point. So maybe in the future they will appear in a video. There you go. That is hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will answer you. But now it is time for the very best part of the show, and that is where I thank our Patreon supporters. The people who support the channels at $25 or more a month get a special shout out every week on the Sunday Stuff and Things. And again, I cannot thank you guys enough. As I have mentioned way too many times, I can't monetize the videos that are specifically about pipes. Um, so this uh, My Mixture 965 Revisited video will not be monetized, and it's your uh, donations, your support on Patreon that helps keep the ball rolling, keeps me making videos, afford blends to, to purchase, to review, all that good stuff. Hopefully some more camera equipment in the future. I still really want to get that EOS R, that Canon camera, someday, someday. So thank you all so much for that. If you would like to donate or be a supporter on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below. It is patreon.com slash stuff and things show. But now for the shout outs. And we will start with our good friend, Glenn. Derek. Cody Striegler, our good friends, I should have said. Nathaniel Hills. Kirk Crompton, Private Eye. C.W. Piperman. Garrett. Ryan McFadden. Corbin Borbin. Adam Loveless. M.D. of the North. Robert. Venerous, Ryan Stopper, and AJ Hogue. Thank you all so much. And now it is time for the Maniac Tier, the crazy people who support the channel at $100 a month and who are entitled to a Sk Skype conversation or FaceTime, whatever, with me. People like our good friend Peter Straub. Just spoke to him recently, and it was a great conversation. Bob McGee, stolid, dependable Bob McGee. And last but not least, Michael Pilcher. It was great speaking to you yesterday, Michael. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, and I hope all of you have wonderful holidays. I'm going to be seeing you before the holidays, but I'll just keep saying happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and all that good stuff. And until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday, Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. <laughs>